Alrighty, welcome to this part two of a rollerball tutorial in Unreal Engine 5. Today I'm going to be going over how to add sounds to this ball that we created and added the function for rolling in part one. So without further ado, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, what we want to do is, of course, have our third person character blueprint open and uh, be around the movement input section. Uh, let's go ahead and widen the comment box here. Uh, because this is where we'll be adding the sounds uh, before we uh, add any of the nodes for the sound functionality we need to actually get our sounds first so we can go to uh, freesounds.com uh, or .org pretty simple place and what we want to first do is look for a roll sound um, just go ahead and play that uh, maybe just rolling ball that might be a little better more specific uh, and what you want to find here again pick your own doesn't really matter is something that can loop you don't want to uh, have something that cuts otherwise it is not going to sound as good because we're going to want it to loop anyways um, so that one could be good this one sounds horrible like a jet engine but I'm going to use it and I'm going to pitch it down a bit and it should sound like a regular rolling uh, so let's go ahead and download this. You will have to log in uh, or create an account to download, but everything's free, so don't worry there. Uh, next, let's get a bounce sound. I'm just going to use the word thud. I think that's a good word that works. Um, this one sounds a little bit better, so I'm going to download that as well. Um, now that we have our two .wav files, that's uh, important. You need that exact format for it to be imported into uh, Unreal Engine. Uh, so first you can go to content here in Unreal Engine and let's go ahead and make a new folder. Uh, just call it sounds. Um, and in sounds we can import these. Uh, I'm just going to drag and drop these the files from uh, my downloads folder and they should pop up. Um, now what we need to do is create queues for this. So to do that you just right click and you do create queue. Uh, we'll name this one, this is the, the bouncing sound, so let's hit bounce, uh, Q. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up, so you can see what it looks like. Uh, we have the sound and then the output, uh, you can hit play, and that's a good volume. If you wanted to play with the volume, you can play with it here, but it sounds good, so we can save that. And then now we can do the same thing for the rolling sound, create Q, and go ahead and call this roll underscore Q and then we can go in here this one all you care about because it sounded weird so first one thing we're gonna want to do is click on the actual sound itself and hit looping this is we're gonna want the sound to loop uh, because we want the sound to be continuous um, as we're rolling uh, so that's set but then we want to go back to the output here um, sounds a little loud so what I'm gonna do is reduce the volume and then I'm going to pitch it down in the hopes that it just sounds more like a rolling ball and that's like a jet engine. A little bit better. That's good enough for tutorial sake, so we'll go ahead and save this. So now that we have our sound cues all set up, what we can do is go into the third person character blueprint here and look at the movement input. So the way this is going to work is we're going to use the enhanced uh, input action. So if we're uh, giving input on actions, uh, when it's triggered, we're going to want to play the sound. And when it's completed, we're going to want to stop the sound. Uh, we're going to use an additional uh, catch there that if uh, if the player can jump, we also will play the. We'll make sure that we can play the sound as well, uh, because when you're rolling around and you jump, you want the sound to stop. So, uh, what we want to do is go to the end of this tr uh, long node train. Uh, go ahead and expand the comment box here, and what we're going to start out with is a good old-fashioned branch with a uh, B left click, or you can just uh, right click and search branch. We're going to put that in here. And we're going to get the variable can jump, or the node, I should say. Um, this is already an existing thing you can use to track. Um, if you are using the physics-based version of this, uh, you can just use your jump tracker that we already had. Um, but you can go ahead and put this in. Um, and that is the first step. 
And so if you can jump, meaning you're on the ground, your ball is grounded, now we can do our next conditional check. So you can go ahead and get another branch here. Um, and this we're gonna use uh, our tracker. So what we want to do is create a new tracker that says uh, roll stop. So if our player is stopped, we want uh, we want to have the sound stop. So what we want to do is by default set this to true. When you start the level, you're not moving. So uh, all is well there. So what we're gonna wanna do is pull this uh, this variable in um, as, this, as the variable, of course. Um, and then if it's true, meaning it has been stopped, um, we're gonna wanna play our sound, meaning um, this all works. So what we're gonna wanna do is you can't play a 2D sound because um, you want to promote it to a variable so you can use it. You actually want to spawn the 2D sound. So spawn uh, sound 2D. Um, this will, so, and we'll select our roll cue that we created. <clears throat> and like I said, we wanna use spawn 2D sound because you have a return variable here which you can promote to variable. So we'll select this and create, call it rolling sound. Uh, we want to do this because we want to be able to stop it and be able to stop it, you need to spawn it as a variable uh, so you can access it later. And then last but not least, we want to um, set our roll stopped, uh, get roll stopped uh, to false. If I can get the right note here, there we go, perfect. Um, and then, so this is, it's good, but what if you can't jump? Well, we want to stop the sound. So first thing we want to do is grab the false, false note here and go ahead and get another branch uh, because we have this new roll sound here. Um, and if we're jumping, we want to make sure, and we're pressing forward, we want to make sure it's stopped but you can't stop a sound if it doesn't exist, meaning if you start the level you already stopped and you jump, um, it's gonna try and stop it, and if it doesn't exist, it's gonna throw air. So what you wanna do is get this new roll sound that we set up, um, do uh, pull the note out, and do is valid. This will check if the variable has been instantiated or not, meaning this has been played first. If it has, then it's valid, and we can go ahead and grab the sound here and we can stop it which is just what we want and lastly we can set roll stopped to be true um, uh, we have it down here um, because we want to make sure that if we are already rolling and the sound is already playing and looping we don't want to play it again um, if you're playing the sound again, you get a really annoying sound where it just it echoes and it gets louder and louder and you don't want that to happen. So what you're going to do is you have this all set up nicely, but we have one last thing to do. This is starts it all and uh, stops it if you're, you jump, um, but what if you just stop rolling? This is where we're going to use the complete it, um, but we're going to use some of the already existing stuff here. We can just go ahead and actually copy the code from here and place it right down here. And if it's completed, what we're gonna do is, of course, check our roll sound to see if it's valid, meaning we have are actually rolling, um, and the, or the sound has actually been created. Um, and then we're going to stop and set stopped, roll stopped to be true. So if we compile and save this, we should now be able to roll around, hear our roll sound, and when we jump, we don't hear it, and when we stop, we don't hear it. So if we go into it, and hit Alt-P, you can hear it, and then if I jump, nothing, and then we continue, and then if I stop rolling, it stops. So perfect. Okay, and to simulate the hit sound, what you're gonna wanna use, what we've used before in part one, which is the event hit, uh, not event tick, but event hit. Um, again, you want to make sure that your capsule component has, uh, if you scroll down, simulate generate hit events. Uh, that way you can use this event uh, hit tracker. Um, and so what we want to do is if we hit something, if our ball hits something, we want to do this just once. Um, and what we're going to want to do uh, is out of this, we're gonna to want to play sound. 
uh, or play our 2D sound. Play sound 2D. Actually, mm, let's see here. Does this have the volume? Perfect. Okay, yeah. So yeah, let's play our 2D sound, and we're gonna want to do our bounce that we added. Okay, cool. So we can bring that in. Um, and what we want to do as well, a little bit of a, a additional feature, is um, add, if we're hitting harder, it's a little bit louder. Uh, we have this uh, volume uh, multiplier that we can use. Uh, by default, it's set to one, meaning it's gonna do whatever sound you set it to in the actual cue itself. Um, so what we're gonna want to do here is um, add a couple more notes here. So we're going to want to grab our capsule component. This is the little bit more complicated part, but if you follow along, it should just be fine. You're going to get the get component uh, velocity. Mm, is it transformation? Yes, I believe so. Get component velocity. Perfect. And then we're going to want to uh, break the vector. And then we're gonna want to take the absolute value of all of these. Abs, abs, and just duplicate this. Absolute value of all of these. Oops. Line them all up, all pretty. Yeah, good enough. Um, and what do you know? We're going to put this into a make array. So we're going to want to make an array of all these. Add two pins. Add them in like so. So what this is going to do is taking the absolute value of this, meaning if you're jumping uh, up into something, or you're falling down into something, we don't care if it's negative or positive. We just want it to be um, uh, a value. And we're going to take all these and put them into an array because what we want to do is get the max of these. Um, pretty much saying that like whatever direction we're going, whether that's in the x direction, the y direction, or the z direction, whatever is the greatest, uh, meaning whatever we're going the fastest, is what the, the sound's going to be. Uh, create or generated from the volume multiplier that is so what we want to do is take this max value here uh, this is great this gets our max value but it's in velocity terms so you're gonna want to uh, divide uh, by a thousand is what I found to be good so three zeros hit enter and then you can just plug this straight into the uh, volume multiplier yeah, so now we have a sound that plays once and it plays louder if we land harder, uh, which I can demonstrate in a second here. Um, but the issue is it only does once, right? So what we want to do is just simply add a delay because um, we don't want it to be playable right away because in some cases uh, when you're rolling, you can actually cause it to glitch and you can kind of get it to, you know, and we don't want that repeated chainsaw noise. Um, when we're hitting a wall. We do have this volume multiplier, meaning if we're going into a wall um, with, a, with you're not going to have any velocity because you're not moving, right? Um, it will play it at zero uh, volume because of the multiplier, so that fixes it. But just in case we don't glitch out the system, we can just do uh, at a delay of 0.15 and that should be perfect. Um, so with this, we can go ahead and test this. And if we see here, if we jump, we have a nice roll, and we still have our roll sound here. And if I pull up to this um, and I jump up, uh, it'll be a lighter land, so we should have a lighter sound. Yep, a lighter sound. And if I jump off the top here a little higher, it's louder. So this is exactly what we want. You should be able to run into a wall, it still works, jump off everything, and there you go. You have a uh, perfect sound. Uh, now remember, you can trade out any of these sounds with something better. Um, personally, I don't like this rolling sound. I would definitely choose a better one. Uh, the bounce sound isn't bad. 
Um, I found with the, the bounce, you can actually make your own sounds. Just record a sound of you just hitting your desk or something, and it'll sound perfectly. But uh, the roll sound, you can find something better on that, that website. But uh, that concludes everything. I uh, hope you learned something new here, and hope you can apply this to uh, your game if you're trying to learn Unreal Engine. So uh, thanks for watching. Bye.